Sins of Commission by R.D. Wingfield with Alan Dudley as Mr. Merry. Sins of Commission. That's the lot, Mr. Bradley. Right. Set the alarm. What? Right. Shut the inner door. Right. All out. Main doors. Thank you, Fletcher. Right, gentlemen. Let's set the three-part combination lock at my safe for the night. You first, Jordan. Okay. Give us room, then. What? Oh, sorry, old boy. And now me. <sighs> That's it, then. Operation completed. Excellent. Good. I'll be up there, Mr. Bradley. Ah! No. Would you hold on for a moment, please, Fletcher? I've hmm? got something to tell you. Bad news, I'm afraid. Bad news? Well, a bit of a shock, perhaps. Not the end of the world, not to a chap of your capabilities. My fellow directors and I... Yes, our overheads are too high. Uh, top heavy. You see... Oh, look. Take this envelope. We're giving you an extra month's salary in lieu of notice, and you'll find a check for your full redundancy settlement. Redundancy? You're getting you're getting rid of me? What do you want a security officer for with this new vault? Your job's gone, Fletcher. It isn't necessary anymore. I see. Well, when do you want me to? Well, we'd like you to leave tonight. A clean break will be best. Tonight? Oh, why not? The work's out today, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Well, there's your problem. We'll check and take over your odds and ends. Hmm. Right. You others ready? Now, don't worry, Fletcher. You won't have any difficulty finding another job. At my age? I'd like to think we were parting on good terms, Fletcher. Will you shake hands? No, no I, I damn well won't. Oh, dear. Now, what do you expect, Bradley? I'd have punched you on the nose if I'd been in his place. Oh, now, it's late. I've seen enough of this place for one day. Morning, Mr. Fletcher. A letter for you. Oh, another company declining my services, I imagine. Oh, which could be good news. Not if it's addressed to me, Mrs. Mack. I've had four weeks of bitter experience. Oh. I'll get you breakfast. Yes, hmm. Post haste employment agency. <laughs> and whoever wrote into them, still there's been so many. Uh, further to your recent application, we now feel we have a proposition which could interest you. Could you kindly call on our Mr. Merry on the 15th at 11 o'clock? The 15th. Uh, the 15th? Uh, that's today. Yeah. Mrs. Mack, uh, I've got to go out. No time for that, I'm afraid. Now, keep your fingers crossed for me. It could be a job at last. Agency. Good morning. Yes. Sorry, love, it's been filled. Might have something for you tomorrow. Goodbye. Oh, uh, excuse me, but... Um, yes? Um, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, my name's Fletcher. Uh, your Mr. Merry uh, wrote to me. Have you got your letter? Uh, oh, yes. Ah, half a mouth. Mr. Fletcher's here, Mr. Merry. Right. First door on the right is waiting for you. Oh, thank you. All right, all right. I've only got one there. Come in. Mr. Merry. That's right. Oh, uh, my name's Fletcher. 
Mr. Fletcher, what a pleasure. Come in. Come in. Oh. <laughs> Bang on the dot of 11. That's what I like to see. <laughs> Please sit down. Pleasant journey? Uh, yes, thank you. Splendid, splendid. You're not fixed up anywhere, are you? Uh, no. Thank goodness for that. Sorry the appointment was at such short notice. The damn girl couldn't find your number. Oh, uh, the phone's under my landlady's name, Mrs. Mack. Ah, that explains it. And I thought it was incompetence. <laughs> She'll never forgive me. <laughs> You'll take coffee. Uh, that's very nice of you. My dear chap, it's my pleasure. Ah, gee. Do you think we should have two copies? Oh, never mind that, but it rings. You usually do. As well, quick as you can. <coughs> Staff aren't as willing as they used to be. You know, it's damn good of you to come at such short notice. I've been to quite a few agencies since losing my job, Mr. Merry, and my reception has varied from mild disinterest to downright hostility. Ah, yes. I'm rather overwhelmed by your enthusiasm. My dear chap, you should have come to us in the first place. <laughs> we flatter ourselves we can instantly recognize a man's true worth. <laughs> We charge 10%, by the way. I hope that's all right. 10%? Our fee. 10% of your earnings. It's the usual thing. Oh, uh, well. well. If we don't get you a job, you don't pay us anything. Keep us on our toes, you see. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, uh, of I'll course, get Jean uh, to make out the form. <laughs> Never there when you want her. Come in. I've been trying to get you on the phone. I've been getting your coffee. I can't be in two places at once. Well, that is true, of course. Well, stick it on the desk. Yeah, thank you. Now, would you make out a commission agreement form for Mr. Fletcher? The first chance I get amongst my many other jobs. Good girl. Your phone's ringing. I can hear it. Yes. <laughs> a heart of gold, really, if you've got the patience to look for it. Uh, your coffee. Uh, thank you. Yes. Oh. Say, this is disgusting. <laughs> we get it from one of those machines. Jean used to make it herself, but it was worse than this. Uh, drink it while it's hot. Oh, yes, of course. Mm. Now, how long were you with your, your last firm? Uh, Nineteen years. Nineteen years. And they made you redundant, just like that. Ah, terrible. Terrible. Mm. I, uh... I used to be an employee, you know. Hmm? 23 years with uh, Wiltshire and Wilkes, the timber merchants. 23 years. Never absent, never late. They made me redundant, just like you. Kicked me out at a moment's notice. I swore I'd get my own back. Wiltshire and Wilkes? Uh, didn't they have a nasty fire, a place burnt to the ground? Mm, something like that, I believe. <laughs> nasty business. <laughs> now... Refresh my memory, Mr. Fletcher. What did your firm deal in? Anything inflammable? Yeah, who could, Lord, no. Diamonds. Diamonds. They were wholesale diamond merchants. You know, I find that terribly interesting. And you were their security officer? Until they got the new vault. Yes. Yeah. What was the, the value of the diamonds you were responsible for? Just before I left, we increased our insurance cover to £800,000. And on more than one occasion, our stock was in excess of that figure. I find you a most stimulating person to talk to, Mr. Fletcher. A most stimulating person. So, after 19 years of devoted service, you get dismissed at a moment's notice to save your firm a few pounds in overheads. <laughs> Disgusting. I suppose it is. Well, there's no suppose about it. If that's the reward for honesty, it's, well, it's no wonder people's thoughts turn to crime. Have your thoughts ever turned to crime, Mr. Fletcher? I haven't really thought about it. Oh, you should. You should. Uh, uh, cheers. Uh, cheers. Mm. You know, if I wasn't such a coward, I'd ask Jean for another copy. Mm. I suppose you're dying to hear about my proposition. Yes, please. Uh, what sort of salary? A salary, oh, uh, it wouldn't be a salary. You get commission only, a straight commission basis. Oh, I don't think I'd like to... Oh, uh, come now. Have you no faith in your own abilities? What sort of a job would it be? Something rather different from what you've been doing. Almost the opposite, in fact. <laughs> you, uh, you don't mind what you do, I suppose? Oh, anything. <laughs> so long as it's legal. Oh. <laughs> You're making it... Uh... 
a bit difficult for me, Mr. Fletcher. Would it involve selling? No, oh, no, no, no. We'd be paying you for your uh, specialized knowledge. Knowledge of what? Security arrangements and diamonds. And how much could I hope to earn? Well, we pay a commission of 15%. 15% of what? I think you said the value of diamonds in your old firm's vaults was about 800,000 pounds. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, then your commission would be 15% of 800,000, uh, which I make uh, yeah, 120,000 pounds. Tax-free, of course, uh, but less my 10% agency fee. Just what are you suggesting, Mr. Merry? Oh, come now, Mr. Fletcher. You're an intelligent man. I don't have to spell it out, do I? I'd like it spelled out. <laughs> All right, then. But first, let me show you that you've got to live dangerously if you want anything. Two more copies at once, please, Jean. <laughs> oh, I bet I took her by surprise. <laughs> you watch her face when she comes in. It'll be as black as thunder. <laughs> now, then. There's 800,000 pounds worth of diamonds stored in your old firm's vaults, Mr. Fletcher. It's my belief that with your specialized knowledge and help, we could get them out. You mean steal them? <laughs> yes. I do seem to use a lot of words where one would do. <laughs> Come in, Jean. Ah, what a treat to see your smiling face. I'd like to remind you, Mr. Mary, that I'm employed here as a switchboard operator, not as a waiter. Well, then just... Put the copy on my desk, Jean, and return it at once to your chosen profession. No. Hold on, miss. Hey? Would you mind not leaving us? I'd like a witness. Now, Mr. Merry, would you mind repeating in front of this young lady the suggestion you just put to me? <laughs> you make it sound like something improper, Mr. Fletcher. <laughs> I merely told you that if you helped us to steal some diamonds, you get 15% of the take. Did you hear that, miss? 15%? You're mad. We do all the work and he gets 15%. Oh, but he's vital, Jean. Vital. Oh. The whole thing would fall through without his cooperation. Well, 10% would have been ample. Oh, I think we can afford to be generous. There'll be plenty to go around. Good Lord. Oh, I say you're not leaving us, are you, Mr. Fletcher? I don't think there's any more to be said. Well, you don't have to make up your mind right away, of course. But uh, we'd appreciate a quick answer. You might as well know I'm going to the police. If you think that's the right and proper thing to do... By all means, do it. But you'll be making a fool of yourself. And you'll be wasting the time of a body of men for whom I have a great deal of respect. Jean and I are marvellous liars, you know. To save time, may I phone from here? Well, I prefer it for you to use the one on the switchboard. My work must go on, you see. <laughs> uh, you'll get it for him, would you, Jean? And then come back and take some letters while we wait. Mm. Mm. Oh, I say, you didn't set the machine for oxtail soup, did you? This coffee tastes even stranger than usual. And if there is any other way we can be of service, please don't hesitate to blah, 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 the usual rubbish. Now, the next one. Yeah. Ah, that sounds like the flat feet of the law, Jean. You'd better nip through the other door. Right, Mr. Mary. Uh, just a tick. You can take the cup. I don't know how you can drink that stuff. Uh, the secret is not that it touch your tongue. <laughs> Off you go. Oh, all right, all right. The great dictator. Oh, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> Uh, in here, officer. Uh, hmm? Well, do you mind going through reception, please? This is a pri... Oh, good Lord, Mr. Fletcher, how are you? This is the man, Sergeant. Well, all right, all right. Uh, leave this to me, please. Uh, <clears throat> is your name Mary, sir? That's right. <laughs> Mary by name and Mary by nature. <laughs> but, uh... Graham, sir. Detective Sergeant Graham. Ah. Do you know this gentleman, Mr. Mary? Ah, oh, he knows me all right. Uh, yes, of course I know him. His name's Fletcher. He's applied to us for employment. Sorry, Mr. Fletcher. Nothing for you yet. This gentleman has made a very serious accusation against you, sir. Oh? He tells us that you have invited him to join with you in a conspiracy to steal some diamonds to the value of approximately 800,000 pounds. Oh, Mr. Fletcher. You deny it, sir. Well, of course I do, Inspector. Sergeant, sir. Oh, Sergeant, yes. <laughs> I won't press charges against him. I feel sorry for him. It must be a great strain losing your job in these difficult times. If I had anything to offer, Mr. Fletcher, you get it, you know that. But taking it out on us like this, well, I thought better of you, you know. He's lying, Sergeant. He put that proposition to me barely 30 minutes ago. Please, Mr. Fletcher, let me handle this. So, Mr. Murray, was this gentleman with you this morning, sir? Oh, no. Oh, dear me, no. He was last in here, uh... 
I'll ask my secretary. She'll know. <laughs> I don't think that's a nice thing to say, Jean. Now, would you mind popping in for a minute? <laughs> Charming girl. She'll soon sort it out. Yes? <laughs> Jean, come in. This is Detective Inspector Graham. Detective Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant, yes. Yes. Well, your promotion is not too far away. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the other gentleman, Mr. Fletcher. Ah. Uh, yes. Yes, I remember him. Yes. He's got a good memory for faces. Now, when was he here last, Jean? Uh, well, I can look it up in the book. Uh, about uh, four days ago, I think. Yes. That's right. Last Thursday. Yes. He was throwing his weight about because we didn't have anything to offer him. Oh, I was here today. You know I was. No, 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 no. Why don't you take it easy for a few days? You've obviously been under too much strain. He's lying, Sergeant, and she's lying. Is that so? We can soon prove it, sir. Could I look at that book you mentioned, miss? I'll go and get it. No, no, no. I'll come out for it. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions on your own. Well, thank you very much, miss. You've been a great help. Not at all. Oh. Come on, Mr. Fletcher. Right. Hello. Oh. Taste employment agency. Can I help you? Well, Mr. Fletcher, oh, no, none of this seems to bear out your story. Both lying. So you keep telling me, sir. Do you wish to uh, persist with the charge? Oh, it doesn't seem much point, does it? Not for me to say, sir. Oh, yes, yes. You don't believe me, do you? What was your speed? All right, all right. I withdraw the charge. There's no point in going on. If that's your decision, sir. It is. If you should change your mind, just let me know. Well, goodbye, sir. I'd try and take it easy if I were you. Oh, well, thank you for trying, anyway. Goodbye, Sergeant. Medical. If I'm afraid there's only the fire. Ah. It's a fire in class, I think. Uh, no, that's probably the fire. Come in. Ah, Sergeant Graham. Where's Mr. Fletcher? He's gone, sir. He's decided to withdraw his allegations. Lack of evidence. Oh, good. That's being sensible. Very sensible. I thought you were going to be an inspector. Now, Sergeant. Police wouldn't send an inspector or a thing like this. Well, you should know, of course. <laughs> Sorry if I nearly messed things up anyway. Well done. Very well done. <laughs> I'll get your money. Nine pounds. Hold on. We said ten. Ah, uh, uh, less my agency fee. <laughs> Overhead, you know. There. Oh. Any more jobs? Nothing on the books at the moment. But... Keep yourself free after next week. Mr. Fletcher is going to turn up trumps. You think so? I know so. <laughs> and in this instance, diamonds will be trumps. <laughs> well, I keep an eye on him if I were you. If he phones the police from his home, we could be in real trouble. My dear Graham, I don't expect you to do the worrying for a mere ten pounds. That's what my commission's for, to take that off you. It's all taken care of. Harry's keeping an eye on him, and we'll get his phone tapped. I must get phase two into operation. So he'll come cap in hand to us in, what, seven days? <laughs> Fancy a coffee. Good morning, Mrs. Mack. Oh, Beautiful day. Beautiful? It's pouring. Just what we want. It'll freshen us all up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, I'm, I'm glad to see you back to your old self again. Uh, You've been a changed man since you got this new job. It'll be good to start work again. I'm looking forward to next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it, Mrs. Back. Oh, thank you, dear. 2940. Yes, speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Davis. What do you mean? But you promised me. Uh, you told me I had that job. I see. Yeah, I see. Beautiful day. Just look at that ruddy rain. Morning, team. Morning. Oh, it's raining cats and dogs out there. Yeah, I'm in here. Look at that ceiling. This office isn't fit to work in. Ah, you won't have to for long, Jean. <laughs> or what if I leave my umbrella in here? Why, what's wrong with your own office? Can't mess it up with dripping umbrellas. Expecting a most important visitor. Uh, has Mr. Fletcher phoned yet? No, why? Did you expect him to? <laughs> well, I get these odd flashes of intuition from time to time, you know. Ah, that's him now. Mm. Host Haste Employment Agency, can I help you? Oh, um, half a mo. 
Yeah, it's him. Shall I put him through to your dry office? Uh, no, I'll take it in here. I want you to admire my technique. Hello, Mr. Fletcher. What a pleasant surprise. Uh, <laughs> you've been thinking it over. Jolly good. Now, I think we should have a little chat, don't you? Uh, can you be here by 11? Yeah. Good. I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Boy, he was lost and is found again. The padded carpet is 11 o'clock, please, Jean. Coffee for two. Well, how'd you do it? Ah, the poor wretch has had a, <laughs> a terrible disappointment. <laughs> he was promised a really marvellous job at Fenton starting Monday. Then they phoned him the day and told him he wasn't going to get it. <laughs> shocking thing to do, really shocking. Uh, by the way, we owe Bill Davis of Fenton's 50 pounds. Send it to his home in a plain envelope, would you? Less the commission, of course. Sometimes I don't think you're very nice, Mr. Merry. I have the odd doubt myself now and then, but it soon passes. <laughs> you better buzz around and get the others in, Jean. We start talking business today. Ah, come in, Mr. Fetcher, come in. Wretched morning, isn't it? Uh, what, what shall I do with my umbrella? Stick it in reception. Jean won't mind. Right. All right. She was quite rude. I don't think she's taken to you, you know. Can we get down to business right away? The sooner the better. Good. Jean, send the others in, would you? And you'd better come in yourself. Uh, all those people out there. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Come on in, don't be shy. That's right, gentlemen, find yourselves seats. Oh, ah, I see you recognize one of our little party, Mr. Fletcher. Graham, Detective Sergeant Graham. Hello, sir. Yes, it wasn't only Jean and I who were lying our heads off last week, Mr. Fletcher. He was a policeman, but a long time ago. Perhaps I'd better explain. Help yourselves to cigarettes, everyone. Oh, <laughs> ah, like yourself, Mr. Fletcher, everyone you see in this room has been badly treated by their past employers. You know my sad tale. We know yours. George Graham was with the Metropolitan Police for close on 17 years. He left them reluctantly because this security firm tended him away with a fantastic salary. The fantastic salary lasted six weeks. The firm went through a bad patch and he was made redundant. Next to him is Bert Apsley. How do you do, Mr. Fletcher? Bert was with the general post office. That's right. Telephone engineer, 14 years. He left them to become chief installer with a firm dealing in internal office telephones. The firm went broke. The directors stripped the country, taking their employees' wages with them. Never even stamped our car. Bert, tapped the phone when you made your 999 call last week. Beautifully done, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. And then we mustn't forget Jean. He doesn't want to hear about me. Well, of course he does. He's very interested in you. Pleaded to be allowed to put his wet umbrella in your office. <laughs> Jean was private secretary and general dog's body to a handbag importer. One man business. She did everything for him. Typing his books, his cooking. In fact, if we to believe her, there was only one service he didn't get from her. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he worked like a horse six, seven days a week. Then one day, she went to his office and found it locked, barred and bolted. He went, just like that. And she never saw him again. How long did you work for him, Jean? Eight years. Ah. We stories to tear your emotions here, Mr. Fletcher. <laughs> I had to blow my nose hard when Jean told me hers. And now we come to Harry Edwards. Last, but by no means least. How would you do, Mr. Fletcher? Hello. His story is slightly different. For the first 11 years of his working life, Harry was, uh, <laughs> what shall I call you, Harry? A burglar. Yes, yes. That's the word I was searching for. If I didn't want to upset you. Oh, sorry. He was a burglar and a very good one. He had his bits of bad luck, of course. And after a spell in prison and a particularly helpful probation officer, he decided to go straight. Oh, you needn't blush, Harry. We've all done things we're ashamed of. Anyway, they found a sympathetic firm to take him on, and Harry became an accounts clerk. Thousands of pounds passed through my hands in that firm, and never a penny show. No good moaning about it now, Harry. You had your chance. Yeah. Anyway, the firm changed hands. And the new boss was so horrified at having an ex-criminal on the payroll that he sacked Harry on the spot. Wouldn't even give me a reference. So there you are, Mr. Fletcher. A thousand heartbreaks. Yes. Now, if we could get those diamonds out of your old firm's vaults, it would be a marvellous way of working off this collective grudge we hold against employers in general, and in this instance, for you in the particular. 
If you come in with us, we can do it. Huh? What do you say? I'm with you. Good. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. I don't see how I can help. Oh, you underestimate your worth, as your ex-employers did. I had a look at the vault, Mr. Fletcher. It's a Smith Benning, isn't it? That's right, but how did you find Your vault may be impregnable with the rest of the place, a piece of cake. I had a good look round last night at Mr. Merry's suggestion. And, Harry? Well, we can forget about breaking into it. It's too good. Then, with 800,000 pounds at stake, subtler means must prevail. How is it locked? Triple combination locks, electronically controlled. There's three separate locking systems, each controlled by its own combination, and interlocked with the others. They have to be set in a certain order. Until the first is set, you can't operate the second, and so on. None of the three directors trust the others an inch, so nobody knows the other's combination. And unless all three are there at the same time, the vault can't be opened. Yes, supposing the great diamond merchant up in the sky should call one of the three up to him, how would the other two manage to open up? Well, I imagine there are copies of the combination lodged with a bank, which can only be revealed in the event of a director's death. Do you know which bank? No, but knowing how they trust each other, <laughs> you can bet it's in three different banks. Yes, and I think we're all agreed that we can't pinch the combination. Which brings me to my first thought. We'll have to get the directors to open it up for us. Can we find where they live? I know where they live. Well, if we went round to their houses at night and marched them to the vault at gunpoint. No, I don't like that. They're too crude. No, it wouldn't work anyway. It only wants one of them to misdial to jam the lock permanently. It's a built-in safety factor with that type of lock. Is there a time lock? No. They had one on the old vault, but it kept going wrong. What alarms are there? Only one on the inner door. The inner door? An added precaution. We set it just before locking the outer door. It's connected straight through to the local police station. How annoying. Any chance of some delightful person forgetting to set the alarm one night? Ah, I'm afraid not. There's an audible warning device that bleeps if the outer door is locked without the alarm being set. <laughs> it also bleeps away if you try to lock up with the inner door open. But there must be some way of switching this wretched alarm off. When you opened up each morning, for example. There's a conceal switch, but inside the main door, of course. Of course. Of course. Do you know where it is? Well, naturally, I... Well, you're an asset to our team, Mr. Fletcher. Gentlemen, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh. I believe I know how we're going to pull off this job. But before we go any further, perhaps I'd better restate once again how the spoils are to be shared to avoid any possible misunderstanding. Oh, you all get equal shares, 15% of the total take. As head man, I get slightly more, 25%. The reason I get more will become obvious as you gasp in wonder when I reveal the details of my ingenious plan. Oh, and before I forget it, I also get 10% of your shares. Agency fees, you've all signed the forms. Yes, yes, we've all signed the forms. All these wretched overheads, you see. <laughs> anyway, the plan. Now, in my old job, I was once called to the office in the dead of night by the police. I was on their records as a key holder, and there was a suspected break-in. False alarm, as it happened. You said you could get hold of a police uniform, Graham? That's right. And it shouldn't be too difficult to mock up your car to look like a police car. I think your three directors, Mr. Fletcher, are going to be knocked up by the police one night. Oh, they wouldn't, go. Of course, they wouldn't. Oh, dear. Have I overlooked something? Yes, you have. Your idea isn't new. It's been tried before. So the police have come to special arrangements with key holders where large sums of money are involved. They do it with banks, for example. How does this special arrangement work? By a code word. If they want the key holder to turn out, they don't call it his home. They phone. And to show the phone call isn't fake, they use a previously agreed code word. It might be, um, um, or monarch, for example. Yeah. They phone the key holder, say the one word, monarch. And then hang up. Now, the key holder has got to assure himself that the call is genuine, so he phones the police back and says, I've just had a monarch call. That's right, sir, says the police. It was us who phoned. Would you go to your office right away? How ingenious. Yeah, I'm foolproof. Oh, no. Nothing's foolproof when 800,000 pounds is at stake. Any difficulty in tapping their phones, Bert, and pretending to be the police? Oh, please, the guy. One hurdle overcome. And what is the code word, Mr. Fletcher? I know what it was, but it's changed every week. Oh, that's it, then. Patience, Harry, patience. If it's changed every week, Mr. Fletcher, someone must keep a list of the words to be used. Of course. The police have one, and Mr. Bradley has the other. But he keeps it locked up in his desk, and only the directors are allowed to see it. What? 
One of those tuppy eight little office desks, plywood bottom to the drawers, locks you can open with a paper clip. Well, it's the usual type of office desk here. You tell me how to find his desk and I'll let you have a copy of the list tonight. <laughs> ah, he's all smiles again. Now you see, Mr. Fletcher, an excellent morning's work. Now, the last item on the agenda is when do we do it? It's Friday tomorrow. Uh, as good a day as any, I think. The place will be shut for the weekend, so we'll have a bit more elbow room. So... <laughs> Friday it is, eh? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I don't think we'll be missing much on the telly. Now, who says a nice cup of coffee? Uh, Jean? Jean. Jean! What's that? Oh, what, what is this? All right, all right. It's a fan. Oh, o'clock in the morning. You'll be calling us at three o'clock in the morning. But I'm going to find out, isn't it? Hello? Hello? Rhine maiden. Pardon? Rhine maiden. Rhine maiden? Rhine maiden? Mm. Yeah, give me that list. Oh, word list. Uh, but how word list? Oh. In the top drawer there. Come on, come oh, on. Dear. What do you mean this? You're supposed to see it from there. Give it here. Oh, yeah. Yes, Rhine maiden. I have to get down to the office. What? It's like a break-in. But at this time of night. Yes, at this time of night. We've got nearly a million pounds worth of stuff in that vault. But, but, but who are you phoning? Police. Just check back to see if it's genuine. Police. My name's Hicks, Associated Diamonds. Was it you who phoned me? Inspector Mary, right. I'm on my way. He's on his way. Good. Now the next one, Mr. Jordan. Good. It's freezing down here. Think of the money, Bert. That'll warm you. Oh, he's in. He's in. We've been watching his house. Rhine, a maiden. Rhine, a maiden. I'll wait for him to phone back. I hope he hurries with falling behind schedule. Graham hasn't turned up yet for this police car, and Hicks will be here any minute. Yeah. Uh, Langton Police. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Jordan, we made that call. Uh, reported breaking into your office. Could you Mr. Mary. Mr. Mary. Uh, Mr. Speaking to Jordan. Uh, Where is he? On the manhole, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, uh, he's tapped the lines to the local police you. station, you. and he's intercepting their calls. Now, do you fix the alarm all right, Harry? Oh, that. Fine. How do I look as a detective? Oh. Very plausible. <laughs> You're shaved off your moustache. A little disguise. <laughs> Let's hope the Lord tempers the wind of a shorn man, eh? <laughs> a police car approach. Yeah, I know it's all right. It's George Graham. Yeah. No, it's not. It's a real one. What? Right. Into the doorway, quick. Well, uh, you'd better stay down there, Bert. Let's hope they don't notice the manhole covers up. Oh, they do it every night. Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. I'm a professional. Always checking it out. It's a great pair. I'm impressed. How long do they stay? A few minutes at the most. We haven't got a few minutes. He should be here soon. Just how lucky the report direct to the real police. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Bird signaling. There's another car coming. That'll be Hicks. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Relax. The police are going. Let them hurry. There's Hicks' car turning the corner. Let me catch my breath. I'm certainly earning my 10% tonight. I've got enough worrying for all of us. Get through to Bradley now, Bert. Okay, I'm fine. Quick as you can while I head off Hicks. Uh, Mr. Hicks? Yes? Detective Inspector Meddy, sir. Oh, yes. They gave me your name at the station. Well, what's the position? Am I the first? Yes, sir. The other two gentlemen are on their way. The position at the moment, sir, is that we think the chap's still in there. We've got the place around it anyway. Mm. I saw one of your cars turning the corner. Uh, yes, sir. I sent it back to the station for reinforcements. Now, as soon as they arrive and we get our villain, I'd like you and your two colleagues to come with us to check the vault. I see. In the meantime, it's best to keep clear of the building. Would you mind tucking your car away around the corner, sir, and switching off the lights? Oh, and do you think you could keep an eye open for Mr. Jordan? He's due any minute. I'll go and do the rounds of my chaps. Make sure they're positioned all right. 
I'll burst out of your tongue. Don't panic him. But look at the time. What's the delay? Hey, we can't get through to Bradley. Why is that, Bert? I don't know. Wait a minute. I'm trying again. No, unobtainable. He's phoned out of order. It's all going wrong. Oh, come now. We've got two of them here. But two aren't any good. It takes three to get the vault open. No chance of getting through on the phone, Bert. Ah, no, none at all. Well, Hicks and Jordan are waiting patiently around the corner for us to rob them, so it's only polite we get cracking before they decide to go home. Yeah, police car coming. What? Hey, yeah. Ah, it's all right. It's our run this time. Sorry I'm late. There's a real police car cruising around. Yes, they're as thick as thieves tonight. <laughs> I must say, I like the car. Most impressive. Now, tell me, George, what would the police do if they couldn't contact the keyholder by phone? Go and fetch him, I suppose. Good, because that's what we're going to do. You've got that other police uniform? Yes, in here. Hey, all right. Harry, put it on, will you? Uh, no conscientious objections, I hope. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to be our entire police force surrounding this building, so spread yourself out a bit. Right. We'll stop on the way around and say a few soothing words to our friends around the corner. They're probably finding it all rather boring, but then they don't know the exciting things we've got in store for them. You better stay on the line, Bert, in case Bradley's phone decides to work again. Yeah, all right. And you, Fletcher, stay out of sight. Or I don't want them recognizing you. Right, George. Off to Mr. Bradley. Knock again, George. They must have heard us by now. Uh, I used to sleep through the blitz, you know. Bombs dropping, ACAT guns booming. Ah, a light. Who is it? Uh, police, Mr. Bradley. Uh, just a minute. Now, keep back in the light where I can see you. No need to get alarmed, Mr. Bradley. Nothing to worry about. We are police. And I hope you've got a license for that gun. Do you know what time it is? Oh, only too well, sir. Sorry to disturb you, but there's been a break-in at your premises, and we'd like you to come down. Keep back. Why didn't you adopt the proper procedure? Uh, we couldn't get through, sir. Uh, your phone seems to be out of order. Uh, what's the code word? Rhine maiden. Uh, that's good enough for me. Well, hang on a minute while I fling some clothes on. You needn't worry about this. It's not a real gun. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Bradley. We're not real policemen. Oh, how much longer are we going to be kept waiting? Ah, uh, about time. Bradley! Hello, Hicks. Jordan, quick, before that inspector gets out. Were you phoned by the police? Why else will we be here? You phoned them back to verify? Of course we did. That's all right, then. I was a bit worried. Everything all right, gentlemen? What the hell's been going on? It's been stuck in this sight street for over an hour. I'm sorry about that. Mr. Bradley's phone was out of order. We had to go and collect him. Are you sure our building's surrounded by police? I've had a quick look round and haven't seen a soul. Inspector! Yes, Constable? We think he's got away, sir. What? What? He must have spotted us waiting for him, sir, and got out over the back. I should have a few words to say to the sergeant on how well he's been keeping his men hidden. We're searching the area, sir. Hmm. Oh, and there's another thing, sir. The station has been on. The alarm's ringing. The alarm? I they got into the vault and opened the inner door. Let's not panic, gentlemen. We'd better all go and have a look at the vault. Let the sergeant know what we're doing, Constable. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, smart man. Credit to his chosen profession. Well, off we go then, gentlemen. Have you got the keys, Mr. Bradley? That's the alarm, all right. Out the door, still shut. Because we left it. Hasn't been opened. But 
the alarm's connected to the inner door. If it was shut, it wouldn't ring. It could be faulty. Well, let's open up and have a look anyway. It might be as well, gentlemen. Faulty or not, I'd like it switched off. It's ringing continuously in the station. Come on then, Jordan. Start dialing. Six. Uh. Now me. Right. That's funny. What? Well, this alarm isn't sounding from in here. Uh, no, it's a tape recording from out here, I'm afraid. Uh, switch it off, would you, Graham? What? What on earth? Two marvellous little gadgets, aren't they, transistors, thanks to Japanese sweated labour? Sounded just like the real thing. Now, all move back, please, with your hand up. <laughs> this time it is a real gun, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> That's the idea. Now, better switch off your alarm. Then would it work when we open the inner door? Uh, under that shelf, Mr. Graham. You've got it? Uh, yes. In you go, then. Be as quick as you can. Right, you are. You won't get away with this, you know. I hope we will. We've been to so much trouble. <laughs> Is that bag going to be big enough, Mr. Graham? Just about. Yes. That's a lot. First class. Out you come, then. And uh, in you go, gentlemen. What do you what mean? Say? You're not going to shut us in there. I'm afraid, Joe. We want a good start. But we'll suffocate. Of course you won't. There's plenty of air. Come on, please. No. <laughs> You'll live longer in there than out here with a bullet in you, you know, Mr. Jordan. There. Yeah. We'll get the police to ring in a couple of hours so that they can let you out. Uh, you'll know the real police when you see them. Uh, they look much the same as us, only there'll be more of them. <laughs> Mind the doors. and wonder, gentlemen. Aren't they beautiful? 800,000 pounds worth of diamonds. As the poet says, a joy forever. Even more of a joy we can turn them into cash. <laughs> Hide them away. <laughs> Who is it? It's me. Me. Oh, let her in, Harry. Well? He's not there anymore. Packed his bags, left during the night, and his landlady doesn't know his new address. So what's this about him? I'm worried about Mr. Fletcher. He disappeared rather suddenly last night and hasn't bothered to turn up to the share out this morning. Uh, perhaps the police have got him. Oh, you're cheerful. He was a bundle of nerves about last night. I expect he's got cold feet, knocked it. Ah, uh, what do we do about his share? We can't give it to him if he's not here. Uh, before we start smacking our lips at the thought of bigger portions, let me just say that I always treat others as I would wish them to treat me. We put Fletcher's share to one side. Oh. There's over three quarters of a million pounds worth of carbonite bitter there. More than enough for all. Now, it may be a bit early, but I don't think a small celebration would go amiss. There's a bottle of champagne in the fridge, Jean. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. uh, part those glasses, would you, Harry? Uh, who is it? Sorry. Come it's all right. Let him in. I'm letting him buy a few of the stones so we can have some ready money to tide us over. Uh, good morning, Mr. Goldberg. Morning. Your celebration? <laughs> Champagne. Will you join us? At half past eleven in the morning? No, thank you. Pity. <laughs> You've brought plenty of cash with you, I hope. Uh, yeah. Let us uh, see the stuff first. Of course. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, they are beautiful, all right. Very beautiful. Almost indistinguishable from the real thing. What? Mm -hmm. But they are fakes, Mister Merry. Good quality, but fakes. What do you mean? Look, if I was in that sort of market, which I am not, I might offer. Woo. Three or four hundred for them, perhaps a little less. I think someone has been having you on. Say when, Fletcher. When? When? <laughs> well, here's to our success. 
It went off perfectly, just as I said it would, Mr. Bradley. Yes, the insurance company have accepted the claim, and they're going to pay for the cost of a new vault. The famous theft-proof vault. Ah, I'd have been in trouble if it had been theft-proof. Anyway, I'm keeping to my end of the bargain. Here's the key to the safe deposit box. You'll find it contains 200,000 pounds in cash as we arrange. Thanks very much. Well, I'll strip out the back way. If your other two directors should see us together, they might form uh, <laughs> certain conclusions. Very wise. You know, I can't help feeling sorry for that chap, Mary. He did all the work and got nothing out of it, not even his 10% commission. Oh, don't worry about him. He'll find something else. He's that sort. My dear Mr. Robson, come in, come in. <laughs> so glad you could come to see us. <laughs> uh, so... You were kicked out of the Bank of England after 16 years. Terrible. Terrible. Now, I might be able to do something for you uh, on a commission basis. Would you like a coffee? <laughs> Tell me roughly, how much money do they keep in the Bank of England? In Sins of Commission by R.D. Wingfield, Alan Dudley played Mr. Merry and Peter Tardenham, Mr. Fletcher. Bradley was William Fox... Harry, John Hollis, Hicks, David Goodison, Jean, Chris Salt, George Graham, William Eagle, Bert, Nigel Graham.